Newton's first law of motion, okay? Newton came up with a bunch of different laws of motion, and in order to understand them, you have to remember that in Newton's theory, there is no, fri no air friction or atmosphere. So we're talking about a theoretical, the theory of motion, the law of motion, based on the theory that, look, there's, there's no other forces acting on the object, meaning like wind resistance and things like that that we would have in our atmosphere, okay? So with that understanding, Newton came up with and said, hey, I have this idea. And his first law of motion is also known as the law of inertia, okay? All right, well, Galileo came up with inertia, and, and, and Newton, Newton built on his, his idea and the idea of inertia when he said that objects at rest will stay at rest. unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. All right, if you remember, we talked about unbalanced forces in the last video. All right, so an object at rest will stay at rest, like the soccer ball on the ground. It's going to stay there until someone comes along and kicks it, and applies an which is applying an unbalanced force to it. Unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Okay, and likewise, an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Okay, so in that example, so here we have a soccer ball sitting on the field. And it's at rest until you kick it. All right? And two, in order to explain it, you got to imagine that you're out in outer space where there's no atmosphere. There's no wind resistance. There's no friction. Okay, there's no gravity. So picture... Um, a baseball flying through outer space, right? If it's moving at 55 miles per hour in a particular direction, it's going to continue to move at 55 miles per hour forever until some other force either slows it down or pulls it towards it. So unless it hits some sort of um, other planet where there's, a, where there's an atmosphere, it's going to continue moving at that rate. So think about it like this. And the re if you want to think of the opposite, back on planet Earth, when you hit a baseball, it slows down because as it travels through the air, the wind pushes in the opposite direction, creating friction. Gravity pulls it to the ground. Once it hits the ground, the friction of the grass and the or the ground slows it down more, all right? And gravity and until it rolls to a stop. Those are forces acting on the motion of the ball. If friction and gravity did not exist, that baseball would continue to move, and you would hit home runs out of every park forever because it would keep going around, around and around and out into outer space. Okay? So objects will remain in motion with the same velocity unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Okay? Inertia can be defined as the resistance... of an object to change its motion. Okay? And that means the resistance of an object to change its speed or direction. Okay? It is directly related to its mass. Okay, so inertia is directly related, related to an object's mass. More mass 
equals more inertia. Less mass, therefore, equals less inertia. Okay, so the greater the mass, the greater the inertia, the lower the mass, the lower the inertia. So you might want to think about some questions here. Which would be easier to move, an empty box or a box full of apples? Well, if you said an empty box, you'd be correct. All right, Which, so you have an empty box and a box full of apples. Okay, the box full of apples has more mass, oops, which means it has more inertia. Okay, and if you want to think about it a different way, if you've ever been sitting in a car and you're driving down the road, you are, and someone makes a sharp turn left and you lean against everybody else in the back seat. The reason you're doing that is because your body's going straight and you have inertia going in the straight direction. As soon as you turn hard to the left, your body wants to continue moving straight so you continue to push in that direction. Um, it's the reason that they created safety belts or seat belts and they, cre they require you to wear, wear them on your, in a car. If you're driving down the road and all of a sudden, all of a sudden your car hits something, your seatbelt stops you from flying through the windshield because you would continue to move in the same direction as the car even though it's stopped. So your inertia would have carried you through the windshield. Okay? So that's some general ideas of what inertia is. Okay?